What's up guys, welcome to the video. My channel name is College Football Frenzy, back here with another video, and today I'm going to be doing the South Carolina Gamecocks 2020 football schedule breakdown. South Carolina was a team last year that finished 4-8 overall, but they had the hardest schedule by far in all of college football. They had to play Clemson, they had to play Alabama, they had to play Florida, they beat Georgia, and Georgia was a very tough opponent. They had to play App State, who was in the top 20. They had to play Texas A&M. So South Carolina had the hardest schedule in all of college football last year, and they finished 4-8. and eight. Clearly, they were a little bit better of a football team overall than the record, record suggests, although still they're not a fantastic football team. They're at least probably an average, maybe 6-6, six and 7-5 six, and five team if they're in a conference like the ACC. So they're definitely... They were definitely better than the record suggested last year. And for this upcoming season, I'm pretty optimistic that South Carolina will at least be a little better record-wise. Record but I will say, this is still one of the hardest schedules in all of college football. It's very hard. Of course, they're playing Clemson. Of course, they have to play teams like Florida and Georgia every year. And they have to play a t couple other tough opponents. Of course, they have the easy games in there because they need them. But overall, it's another tough schedule. I don't think it's the hardest schedule in all of college football, in my opinion, but it's definitely one of the toughest. And this was one of the toughest schedule breakdowns to do because South Carolina is like a team that's right on the cusp of being bowl eligible. That's the big question for this team. Can they make a bowl game? First overall, like I said, four and eight last year. Their final FBI rank, despite going four and eight, was forty. Was the forty first best in the nation? Their recruiting class rank for this upcoming season is the eighteenth best in the nation. So they're getting a lot of new talent coming in, and returning talent's pretty good overall. Seventy two percent of their overall overall talent is coming back. Seventy two. 2% on offense and 72% on defense that averages out to 72% overall so they have a lot of returning production coming back that's one of the best returning production rates in all of the nation so South Carolina should be pretty talented we'll see how Mushamp do, does with this team uh, but it's a tough schedule expect uh, you know a lot of losses against really good football teams but let's get into this schedule Number one, Coastal Carolina, that'll be an easy game, no no trouble there. Two, East Carolina, easy game, no trouble there. So you start out 2-0 and pretty easily, uh, no challenge. I actually noticed you don't, you don't play North Carolina. Some years, obviously, South Carolina plays North Carolina, uh, which is kind of like a rival. Uh, but this year, they don't play North Carolina, and that definitely helps. They usually play them at the start of the season, uh, and that helps because North Carolina is probably going to be a pretty good football team. So they drop North Carolina, that definitely helps a lot. 3 Missouri, this is going to be one of the easiest SEC games you get. It's early in the season. Drinkwitz, the new head coach of Missouri, I think he's still relatively new. It's going to take time for him uh, to adjust to this scenario, especially considering this coronavirus thing is going on. That definitely hurts new coaches. So I don't think Missouri at this point is going to be ready for the season. Their talent isn't great, one of the worst recruiting classes in all of the SEC. I think it's... I think their overall recruiting class, the only team that has a worse recruiting class that, than Missouri in the SEC is Vanderbilt. So it's not a great recruiting class, not great talent. It's a new head coach. Big transition year. I think South Carolina uh, definitely wins this one. I, I just don't think Missouri will be that great next year. So I have the game cocks in this one. Four at Kentucky, definitely a game in which South Carolina can win. But that being said, I feel like Kentucky's the better team overall. They have better returning talent coming back. I feel like they have Joey Gatewood coming at the quarterback position. And their recruiting class, I think, is still in the top 30, so it's not that bad. So overall, their talent is pretty good. It's a home game for the Wildcats. We'll see if their fans show up. Uh, but overall, Kentucky, in my opinion, is the better team. So I would lean towards Kentucky. It's definitely not a guaranteed win for Kentucky, uh, but I would lean towards Kentucky. Five at Florida. South Carolina nearly beat Florida last year. I think it came down to like a couple plays. This upcoming season in the Swamp, I don't think they're going to be able to beat the Gators. I think the Gators have great return production. Kyle Trash should be good. Kyle Pitt should be good. They're losing C.J. Henderson, but aside from that, there aren't too many losses. And their recruiting class is top 10 in the nation. Uh, so I'll take the Gators here. Six, Tennessee. The Vols are going to be improving. The Vols are improving. We all know that. They pulled in a top 10 recruiting class for this year. 2021 looks like they might be pulling in a top 5 recruiting class. Uh, but Tennessee's doing good. Jeremy Pruitt's, Pruitt's doing a good job right now there. They've got great talent. You know, I think another, this is kind of like Kentucky. South Carolina can win. They're at home. If it was away, I would definitely say Tennessee. But they're at home. So I think they can definitely give the Vols a big challenge. I would lean towards more Tennessee. Uh, but I would not be shocked if the uh, Gamecocks were able to win this game. But I would lean towards Tennessee here.
Seven bye week, nice time to have your bye week. Rest up before a big game against Texas A&M. Texas A&M should be pretty good last, or, I mean, next year. Kellen Mond's coming back. They overall have a top 10 recruiting class. Jimbo Fisher's a pretty good head coach overall. So they should be a pretty talented team that's competitive. It's a home game for the Gamecocks. That's why I do give them a chance. I believe Texas A&M beat South Carolina, Carolina last year pretty uh, badly. Uh, so, you know, based on talent overall, I think Texas A&M is clearly the better team. But it's a, it is a home game for South Carolina. I think it could be a ch I think they could uh, challenge Texas A&M, but I would lean more towards Texas A&M in this one. Nine at Vanderbilt. I think Vanderbilt's the worst team in the SEC next year. It's an away game, but should be pretty easy. Uh, South Carolina needs this win, and I think they'll get it. Ten Georgia. Oh boy, Georgia's gonna be wanting revenge after last year. They're gonna be wanting revenge. They're gonna prepare for this game. We all know they're gonna prepare for this game. Honestly, this might be the the most guaranteed loss out of any game on there. And you're playing at LSU and at Clemson, but Georgia is gonna be very, very hungry for revenge, and I expect them to get it. I'll take the Bulldogs here. Listen, it just, it's they're gonna they're gonna want revenge. They didn't play a great game last year against South Carolina. They're going to be hungry for it. I'm taking the dogs here. 11 at LSU. Not nice. That's definitely not a nice stretch. Georgia and then at LSU the week after. That is a very tough stretch. Uh, LSU, they're losing a lot of talent, but it's at Death Valley late in the season. And LSU still has a top five recruiting class. And they're still overall probably going to be a top 10 team. I'll take the Tigers in here. I don't think I can argue there. 12, Wofford. You get a little, bit, a little bit of a break to prepare for your rival Clemson. You kind of need it considering you just played Georgia and LSU. You're probably massacred at this point. Uh, you'll get the win here against FCS Waf Wofford. 13 at Clemson at Death Valley or at the other Death Valley. Uh, not going to be a good game. Clemson's the best team in the nation in my opinion. They're very good, very talented on both the offense and defense. They pulled in. A top five recruiting class, you can argue, was the best recruiting class. Man, they are talented on all sides of the ball. And they've got the best, they have one of the best coaches in all of college football. And probably the best defensive coordinator in all of college football. So, Clemson clearly uh, is the more talented team here. And the one that's probably going to be more, more prepared. I hate to say this game, Cox fans, but I don't think you have a chance in this game. You know, you've played them close in the past. I'll, I'll admit that. Uh, but this year, I just don't think it's going to happen for the game, Cox. Uh, so I'll take the Tigers here. So overall, looking at the schedule, I think you have four guaranteed wins and four guaranteed losses. I shouldn't say guaranteed, but four very likely wins and four very likely losses. You can... You can guess that the four very likely wins are Coastal Carolina, East Carolina, Vanderbilt, and Wofford. And the four very likely losses are Clemson, LSU, Georgia, Florida. Then you have four games that I think relatively you could win, but you also could lose. Missouri, I think, is one that I would definitely favor you in, so I would give you the win there. But then again, I feel like Tennessee and Texas A&M are two games, you know, you could definitely put a challenge in, but overall those two teams are much more talented with top 10 recruiting classes, probably better off coaching-wise right now in my opinion. So I would say Tennessee and Texas A&M, I would lean more, more towards them in those games. So overall, I think this season comes down to can you beat Kentucky? At Kentucky on the road. I think you're relatively near them uh, talent-wise. I think you can definitely compete with them. It's an away game. I understand Kentucky was the much better team last year. And I expect them to be a little bit better for this upcoming season. But maybe, just maybe, you can pull off the upset at Kentucky. Kentucky has great return production and Joey Gatewood's coming in. So that's definitely going to help. But if you can pull off the, op the upset at at Kentucky, I think you can be bowl eligible. That's really, I think, a huge, huge game that you need to win. That's the key game. It's early on the season. Uh, but overall, I'm going 5-7. and seven. I'm going to play it safe here. Say you don't get a big win. I'm going 5-7. and seven. I could see 6-5. and five. I mean, or 6-6. Six and six. I could see 6-6. Six and six. It's definitely a possibility. But I lean more towards 5-7. and seven. I could even see 7-5. and five. Uh, But... Five and seven right now. Your schedule, I'm sorry. It's tough. It's very, very tough. This is one of the toughest schedules in all of college football year in, year out. I'm sorry. You get unlucky. It's just what it is. Uh, you know, if you were in the ACC, I would definitely have you going bowl bowling or even in the Big 12, but it's a tough schedule. You're just going to have to deal with it. But right now, if you're at five and seven, I would not be shocked if you got went six and six and got a win against Kentucky or maybe somehow you, you beat 
Tennessee or something like that. Uh, but five and seven right now for you. I think that's my average. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you for joining in. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Leave your recommendations down below. Leave your predictions for South Carolina schedule down below. Again, this is one of the most interesting schedules probably in all of college football. It's going to be interesting to see if they can make a bowl game. Uh, so, yeah, leave your predictions down below. Make sure to tell your friends about this channel. I appreciate every subscriber. And, yeah, guys, this is it for now. Thank you for joining in.